What's up everybody? Chris Norris here at jamplay.com and now we're going to dissect and go through a Darkest Hour song called Tranquil, which is from the Victory Records release in the year 2005 called Undoing Ruin. It is the very last track. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, one of my favorite solos and uh, a lot of other people's favorite solo too of mine, so that, that's really cool for me. So I hope you guys like it. Um, we're gonna break it up into a lot of different sections, the riffs, the bridge, the solo. It starts off with uh, this really cool snare buildup that Ryan does, and it kicks straight into the song, and here's the very first riff. <laughs> That's the first riff, um, and this very last note. Has that resolution leading right into there. Um, it's based upon this chord progression. Which, uh, not only Darkest Hour, but every, every band has used over and over and over again. Darkest Hour is used in uh, many songs. We even used it on the new record in, uh, on Deliver Us for the song um, Doomsayer. But so it's based upon that we wanted to recreate, um, you know, a lot of the songs on Deliver Us, not Deliver Us, Undoing Ruin were pretty new for the Darkest Hour style. It had a lot of more solos, more progressive elements. We felt there needed to be a song that had that old school, that captured that old school Darkest Hour song. So what better way to do that than use one of the same chord progressions, but using those new progressive elements that we were doing. So this is the riff we came up with. And let me do it a little slower again for you. It's the basis of the first riff. Um, the only hard part when you're actually doing it up to speed and it's all going to be alternate picked. That jump right there, so. You can even practice that by itself. And the tail. Um, I don't remember what's done, what was done on the record, um, and it's always changing live. I like to do different things live just to keep myself interested. You know, when you play the same songs over and over and over and over again, you know, after a couple hundred times, your mind starts to wander and you get bored. and you start to figure out, oh, what's on TV Friday night or something while you're up on stage playing for a bunch of people. So I like to change things around. So every once in a while, I might pick all those notes, make it legato, whatever. It's always cool to do something different uh, for your own mindset. So that's the very first riff. Let's show the solo. It uh, comes in with this tapping thing. Now you can set your pick down. Tap if you want, but if you're in a live setting where you can't really do that and you don't have like picks hanging off a mic stand, a la Guns N' Roses, 1986, any of that stuff, just take the pick, hold it between your fingers, grab your middle finger like you're gonna flick off the crowd and start tapping. It's a cool little rhythmic pattern we got going on there, and basically this is your pedal point below your tapping. So your melody is... And then this... So... That's kind of the thing, I messed it up by sliding, because obviously that's such a far stretch, so that's why it becomes a tap. So basically there's two melodic lines happening here. It's your left hand melodic line and what I'm tapping is going to be the right. So it's a cool way of combining two melodic lines. So let me show you again the tapping uh, slower. That's gonna happen uh, twice, but at the end you're gonna add this little, you know, 
uh, melodic motif in there. And now we start the actual solo and it's going to be this arpeggio. And that's just two different uh, shapes of this minor arpeggio. So let me show that to you. And that can be either swept or alternate picked. Um, and you know, I have this weird mind, so I, I might be at a show and go ahead and sweep it or I might alternate pick it. Just depends on whatever mood I was in, um, but that's kind of a good way to practice it. You wanna practice it in uh, two different ways. And yeah, depending on how many beers I had at the show. So you can practice it either way. And that's actually really cool. So you don't, you know, get in the mindset of sweeping or alternate picking, you can do both. And then it comes to this, uh, 